जय श्री मनारायण जय श्री मनारायण जय श्री मनारायण टू माई स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर श्रीमद जगत गुरु सुदर्शन आचार्य जी महाराज आई पे माओ बेसेंसेस टू लॉर्ड श्री रामानुज आई पे माओ बेसेंसेस टू आवर पूर्व आचार्य आई पे माओ बेसेंसेस टू आवर ट्वेल्व अलवार्स आई पे माओ बेसेंसेस टू मदर लक्ष्मी एंड आई पे माओ बेसेंसेस टू लॉर्ड श्री मन्नारायण वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू We are physically at the Sri Narayan Dham in Durban, South Africa. I welcome those that are watching this discourse locally, nationally, and internationally, and I welcome in advance those that are going to be watching this discourse when it is posted on YouTube and the various groups from around the world subsequently. Also, welcome those that are watching this discourse on TikTok. continue on our current topic the soul and i also connect various other subjects that are connected to the soul as it is impossible to discuss the soul as a topic on its own everything and every action and every manifestation in this universe starts from a thought so when there was an interval in creation the supreme lord thought i am one let me become many that thought manifested into creation and in creation millions and millions of universes took its birth similarly everything in your life whatever you do whether consciously or unconsciously every action is propelled by a thought the thought precedes the action and the action precedes the manifestation these thoughts that frequent our mind is the cause of our happiness and our suffering a human is guided within these two tracks of happiness and of suffering everything that a human does is to attain happiness and to negate suffering every action of a human is for happiness and humans if you were to to view our planet earth from above you will notice that from the 8.4 million species that inhabit the earth you will notice all these species in harmony with material nature every species that you will notice you will see it is in perfect harmony with material nature 
the only species that is not in harmony with material nature is the Homo sapiens or the human being. You see them digging through mountains, you see them making bridges on rivers, now they tunneling underground, under the sea. The humans are always interfering with the equilibrium of material nature. They are stealing from material nature to find happiness. They tunnel under the sea from one point to another point will save a few hours in travelling time. Is that true happiness? Because after you completed the journey under the sea through the tunnel and after you conscious, consciously appreciated that you saved a few hours, what happens after that appreciation? What happens to that perceived happiness? It was simply a fleeting happiness, but look at the destruction it caused in the structure of the universe or our planet, planet Earth. Look at the destruction. You think tunneling beneath the sea would not affect material nature? in many ways. In, it causes a disturbance in the marine life. What sounds would have penetrated beneath the ocean whilst this tunneling was taking place? What would have happened to the habitat and the infinite souls that live in bodies of aquatic? in the oceans. What happens to the rivers when we make bridges over them? And generally what is happening to the structure of the earth when we continuously making deep foundations for sky skyscrapers. So in all of these things we are on the quest for happiness. We build skyscrapers, aeroplanes to fly from one country to another country quickly in a few hours. But is anybody happy after all this civilizational success? Does it bring us any happiness in reality or is it only a fleeting happiness until we invent something else? Every mode of transport we thought we were going to get happier. Yes? Whether it's car, rail, ship or aeroplanes, until there was the next edition and as soon as the next edition which simplified the previous edition came into being we abandoned what we had and we jumped onto the next edition so everything that came into existence by man and that came into existence by God, man is manipulating it 
for profit. Man thinks profit will give man happiness. And we find in that we are in the 21st century, we have technology at our fingertips. Right now I'm speaking, somebody in space can pick up this discourse. Yes, they can pick this discourse up uh, in space or any part of the world simultaneously as I am speaking. So that yearning for happiness Does a baby yearn for happiness when it's born? You know how many children you had? Six. You never noticed them when they were born? Do they yearn for happiness? Yes. What do, do they do? Yeah. Yes, the hands and legs are always in movement. They will focus their eyes on something that is bright. If a light is on in the room, they will look at that light. Tibeshni, you remember doing all these things? No, Tibeshni, you can't remember, you are the baby. <laughs> all right? And they'll kick their arms and legs and they will be smiling and in a conversation with that shiny object. Yes? Are they in a happy state? Has their mind been induced to be happy, provided they are fed. As soon as they are fed, they are absolutely happy. And when they are hungry, they are very unhappy. Yes or no? So this yearning for happiness has to come from something. Because a baby does not know anything about the material conditions of this material universe. Yes? This yearning for happiness has to be embedded somewhere in the baby's psychology for the baby to want and yearn. The baby's happiness also misplaced. As soon as you put the light off, what will the baby do? Start crying. So the baby's happiness was also fleeting. It was dependent on something external. It was dependent on something outside. So that which is seeking happiness in a, in a baby, seeking happiness in a teenager and seeking happiness in an adult, that entity is the real you. That entity is the real you. You are seeking happiness, aren't you? So that you, the real you, is called the soul. That you, the real you, is called the soul. That soul is situated in the vicinity of your heart. That soul is situated in the vicinity of the heart. It comes up to the eye and views the world. It comes up to the eye and views the world. It comes to the ears and listens to the world. 
it comes in your tongue and taste whatever the world has provided. Does it not? It enters the skin and feels the sensation of touch. The sense of touch circulates on your skin throughout your body. It encases your body. Does it not? So this soul through the body is looking for happiness. The quest of the soul through the body is looking for happiness and is looking for happiness through the five senses. The sense of sight, the sense of hearing, the sense of smell, the sense of taste and the sense of touch. Through these five senses, this soul is yearning for happiness. The commander in chief of the souls, commander in chief of the souls is the mind. Commander in chief of the souls is the mind. And the mind, as I described last week, is a continuous flow of thoughts. You kill your thoughts, you will subdue the mind. And I said also that for your thoughts to be contained in one disciplined direction, you need the banks of the intellect to be absolutely strong. When the banks of the intellect is strong, then the mind in a disciplined fashion will flow within the banks of reason. And when the mind flows within the banks of reason, then you, the soul, will stop yearning for happiness through the senses. You, the soul, will stop yearning for happiness through the senses. Because the senses are described as wild horses. The senses is described as wild horses. What do you mean by wild horses? Yeah, they're out of control. And 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 if a chariot is being pulled by five horses that are out of control, what will be the destination of the chariot? Look at the chaos. These horses are pulling. The horse on the extreme right is pulling. Right. The horse on the extreme left is pulling left. The horse in the center is pulling forward. Then the horse in between the center and the extreme left is pulling in between. And similarly to the horse in between the center and the extreme right. What is happening to the chariot? <laughs> When you move in many directions, can you find happiness? 
So the soul, through the senses, is being propelled in many directions. And when, what is the word to describe this chariot being pulled in many directions? Chaos. Yes? So around the world, there is chaos. This chariot is pulling men, mankind into so many directions and mankind is believing it will achieve happiness by creating comforts and these comforts is not comfortable to the soul, is it? So the most difficult thing is to imagine yourself as the soul, is it? Because I've been preaching for the past 13 years now. And in every year I always place great emphasis on the soul. Did you ask me? Yeah. Somebody commenting negatively on TikTok? Yes, when people comment negatively, I just want to, for the audience, uh, one of my devotees is holding the uh, phone that is recording, TikTok, uh, it's generally Tiveshne, that is why you hear a name so often. So, I am not privy to the comments, but I asked my devotee is not to fight with people that comment negatively. I have asked my devotee is not to respond to them, do not mute them, and do not respond to them. So, and I want to explain why. So, how many people are watching on TikTok at this point in time? Four. From the four, how many is commenting negatively? All right. So we have an equal, equal amount of people that are watching, two are not commenting, and two are commenting. So, so as we move along, our audience on TikTok is between four to nine hundred, as this discourse moves along. So this is the nature, this is the nature of human kind. This is the nature of human kind. So if somebody is watching me from the time I started my discourse up until this point in time when I spoke to Tiveshni, then I am explaining a science. I am explaining a science called spiritual science and it comes from scriptures beyond 5,000 years. Is this topic a real topic? Is this topic a real topic? Does it affect mankind? Is it necessary for information to reach mankind and inform mankind that and give mankind a reason for their suffering? If one person understands this discourse between the thousands. Eventually we run into this discourse will be heard by many thousand people. Yes? Now these people that are commenting 
negatively on this platform. Let us analyze what type of souls they are. Let us analyze what type of souls they are. You got a name there, Dimeshna? So they won't come with their own names. And most of the time, they, those people that come to disrupt divinity will come in disguise. People that will come to disrupt a divine discourse will come in disguise. Are they still on Tibetan? As soon as I started discussing them, they ran away. Okay. These are people that come from, that are born from a demonic womb. From a demonic womb. They are here to disrupt divinity. They are here to disrupt divinity. And they were also beneficiaries of this satsang, some of them. They were beneficiaries of this satsang when they had a fallout with the Guru. Then they go outside, give themselves a fake name. But they are so interested in these discourses that they, they have to come and watch. So as negative comments come up to me, you can put your hand up and you can give me those negative comments unless it is very, very vulgar and we'll discuss them. Do not, do not delete them, uh, do not mute them and do not respond. The Guru will respond because the Guru must be able to respond to anything that is thrown at him. The Bonafide Guru must respond to anything that is thrown at him and this is the nature of divinity and non-divinity. Yes? Okay, yeah, that divinity is mean those people that are on the path of righteousness. On a continuous path of righteousness. And if those people are on a path of righteousness, and if they are listening to a discourse by a Molana in a mosque, by a pastor in a church, or by a rabbi in a synagogue, or by a guru in an ashram, those people who are born from divine wombs, from divine wombs, they would have been placed there to the previous karma. And born of divine parentage, the parents would have taught them right from wrong. It is your karma that sends you to demonic wombs and it is your karma that sends you to divine wombs. If you are respectful, if you respect your elders, if you respect other races, if you respect other religions, if you respect humanity as a whole, then you are said to be divine. If you go on a spiritual or a religious platform and you spew obscenities and hatred, then it shows who your parents were immediately because a divine parent won't get a non-divine child in the womb. Karma is a specific arrangement of souls entering parents, societies, countries, uh, continents and the planetary system. So that is divine. 
if you are righteous, if you have discipline, you do not have to like me and you do not have to like my discourse. Move on like what I do. I also go on TikTok. I also watch things that I am not in agreement with. So I just scroll down. A respectable person, a person of divine characteristics will scroll, scroll down, especially in the context of this discourse that I am having. It is not necessary for anyone, unless you ask like that question that was asked, what I mean by divine, then I answer. Yes, you can ask these running questions, provided they are righteous questions, and they are not asked in sarcasm because sarcasm means you are asking a question with an ulterior motive. So if you ask the right questions, I will answer. If you ask questions which is going to waste the time of my discourse, then obviously we are going to set it aside. So it is absolutely important to know that you are the soul. This is why the world is in chaos. The world is in chaos because it is seeking happiness from an entity that is inert. What does inert mean? What, is, what does inert mean? This body is in earth. It has no life. It has no life. All the material in this body, what, are, what material and elements is this body made up of? Yes. Independently or even collectively, does any of this in, inert material have life? And I want to explain, if you go to an architect and get a plan to build a house, then you buy all your building material. Will the building material coordinate itself in such a manner and build a house itself? Why? You need a builder. So, so similarly, all those elements that's required to build a house is also the elements in your body. Is also the elements in your body, if you cut your finger, and ask your finger to feel when it is outside of your body, can the finger feel? If you amputate a leg, and ask the leg to walk, will it walk? If you remove an eyeball, and place it on the table, and ask it to see, can it see? So, this body is made up of inert elements and only the consciousness of the soul that is flowing through this body give this body animation. Give this body animation. Say, I'm flicking my fingers. This animation is there through the flow of the consciousness of my soul. Because if I retract my soul from this body, then this body cannot be animated any longer. Yes, we have all experienced this. We've seen people that we knew in a few hours time, we heard they are dead. And when we go to them, we see they are in earth every part of the elements of the body is in earth 
That means this body is inert all the time. It is animate due to the presence of the soul. If this body is inert all the time, what? How can it give you happiness? When this body is inert all the time, you are consciousness. The soul is consciousness. The body is un. Conscious. Body is unconscious. It is in earth. It is dead, and the soul is live. If live wants happiness, where does live will get his happiness from? Something that is live as well. Something that is live as well. So, if your consciousness is seeking happiness since birth, it is not finding happiness in the body. Then the body is building something else to find happiness. Yes. The body continues to acquire external things to find happiness. Yes or no? Every living moment, are we not seeking for another way to be happy? But is that happy finding us? That state of happiness is it finding us? Can anyone say I was happy for 31 days of my life continuously, 24 hours a day? Like sobriety. If you refrain from alcohol for 31 days, you can say I was. Sober for thirty-one days. Can anyone say I was happy? I was in a state of happiness for thirty-one days in a row. Because maybe in your awake stage you was in happiness, but you had nine nightmares in your dream state. Yes. So is it possible to? Experience happiness through the senses, which are also in that. Senses are made of the same substance that the body is made. In one of the discourses, I'll show you at creation what is the substance of the senses and the substances of the body. So it is said. That the soul is one ten thousand, the size of the tip of your head. So, if you take the tip of your head and divide it by ten thousand, then you take one part of the ten thousand and divide it by ten. Thousand. After dividing it by ten thousand, then you take one part of it. That is the size of the soul. That is the size of the soul. Can it be seen with the naked eye? Can you be seen with the naked eye? So you sitting in the vicinity of the heart. That's your seat, but you move and locate yourself in the senses. 
and you go back to your seat, your consciousness is spread throughout your body. Is it too hard to Im imagine? What is the size of the sun in proportion to the universe? Is it the same proportion your soul is to your body? Hmm? You think around the same proportion your soul is to your body? Does the sun's rays reach all parts of the universe? Does it? Does your consciousness reach all parts of your body? So it's not too difficult to understand that you are in reality such a small entity, yet you can pervade an entire body. How big do you think is the size of the soul of an elephant? Same size, because all souls are equal in size. And the size, the conscious of Consciousness of the soul spreads the entire body of an elephant. Similarly, the sun's rays, the sun's rays spreads across the planetary system, does it not? Hmm? The same sun spreads across the planetary system. Yeah? You have a question to ask me? No. Okay. So it's not difficult to understand, but it is hard to conceive through this mind of ours, wasn't it? Are you trying to understand that you are such a small entity inside your body? You own how many vehicles? You own four vehicles, those vehicles are so big and you are so... <laughs> huh? It doesn't make sense if you, if you want to contemplate. Does it? That a small entity that is inhabiting the body, your body, and, you, and that body is causing so much of nonsense in this, well, instead of planting trees and getting oxygen around the buildings, you have created a whole system of airflow, haven't you? Instead of asking people to sit in a lotus position for one hour a day and breathe in and breathe out, you are fixing mechanical instruments on the walls. But whilst they continue in the pursuance of happiness, you are aiding them into false happiness, aren't you? Because when a person goes in, in a hot day, when a person goes in a fully air-con room, how does that person feel? Uh -huh. Happy. But how long is that happiness? Short lived because as soon as you walk out of the room, the heat is. So, Vasan is one of those culprits that's causing chaos in this world, isn't it? Selling false hope to people, selling false happiness to people. Is it true? Is it true? All these manufacturers of motor vehicles, are they not also selling false happiness to people? 
Because whether you travel on a horse and cart, whether you travel on a donkey, whether you travel in this in this beautiful uh, motor vehicle, in fact, there was a greater reason to be happy when there was no mechanized transport. Yes? Because if you took a lift on a donkey, no fuel, no pollution, no installment, no insurance, no accident, yes? yes? No stress. End of the month, no? Stop orders. No lawyers, no going to court, no stress. You think civilization, as much as we see civilization for our bodily comfort, civilization has no place for our soul's comfort. Does it? Does it? Now you know why people retreat to the mountains when they become spiritually elevated. Why do they retreat to the mountains? No stress. There's no, no stress. So even here at Ashram, there's a whole lot of stress. We have to maintain this building, we have to paint this building, we have to pay the gardener, we have to get a grass cutting machine. Yes, keeping this ashram in a pristine position creates stress. So again, we need to find a way. We need to find a way to understand that we are that entity that is encased in this body we are the life giving principle to this entity we animate this entity that is the body and the body and our real identity there is no synthesis beside karma this body is made of is designed as per our previous karma and we are currently using it to design our next body. At this point in time, we are using this body to design our next body. That is all that we are doing. That is all that we are doing. We are currently using this body up until it dies to create the next body. And this cycle goes on life after life after life. Then the significance of a bona fide spiritual master comes into play so that the spiritual master can now take you out of this cycle that you are imprisoned in. Is this not a cycle that you are imprisoned in? Have you got the capacity to glean information that science has provided us because you want to be scientific to see how old this existence is. I'm not going by, by uh, our scripture, let's go by science. And wh what science is saying, how old is this earth? Science is saying it is around 4 billion, 4 billion years. What is our scripture saying when science is saying that they have information at this point in time that we are over 4 billion years old? We say science has come close, science has come close because we have two types of creation, two types.
types of creation. One type of creation is when this entire universe is created and it lasts for 311 trillion 40 billion years. Then there is a secondary creation wherein after 4.320 billion years right up to Brahma Lok. Brahma Lok is the highest planetary system right up to Brahma Lok this universe is filled with water. Then Lord Brahma goes to sleep. And after 4.320 billion years he gets up. Lord Brahma's one day is 4.320 billion years and Lord Brahma's one night is 4.320 billion years. When he is awake, then the universe is the living entities in this universe is alive and when he goes to sleep then all the living entities take the rest in Lord Brahma. They all merge into him. And after 4.320 billion years, the water recedes and all those that went to sleep in Lord Brahma appears again. So, so science is almost closed, but they don't have my experience. They don't have my knowledge and they don't have my experience in explaining the ultimate reality and this is why and this is part of my mission is to now from next year go to universities and acknowledge the advancements in science. Firstly, I'm going to acknowledge the advancement in science. You see years ago Science and religion have been at each other's throats. Initially, religion did not want to accept science. And now, science does not want to accept religion. Is it true? That science does not want to accept religion. And years ago it was religion that did not want to accept science. So if science came close to 4 billion or 4.5 billion, I haven't got the accurate figures at this point in time, then we have to commend the scientific community for, for tirelessly experimenting with material nature to find out about her existence. And this is why I found it absolutely necessary that in my quest for oneness, in my mission for oneness, in my philosophy for oneness, it is imperative that we get academia involved in spirituality and this is the reason that I am in collaboration with the University of KZN with Professor from the University of KZN to bring this understanding and synthesize it to bring this understanding of science and spiritual science and we need to hold hands and walk through these processes. When we do that, and when you're sitting in your car, and you're going to work, and you are unhappy, 
because your car is a product of science, is it not? And you thought one day when you jump in your car, when you didn't have a car, what you thought? When you have your own car, you'll be so happy. You listen? What are you thinking at the moment? The day you get your car, you'll be the happiest person on this earth, isn't it? Yes or no, you listen? Yeah, so everyone has been fooled like you. You're not the only fool thinking like that currently. Alright? But you are the experiment in the spiritual science laboratory called the Sri Narayan Dham. But everyone else has been fooled, including the Guru when he when he was attached to the material world. Okay? And the Guru didn't like small cars. Guru like? I think you had the opportunity of seeing the Guru's big car. The big blue one, you saw it? Yeah, so the Guru like big cars, V6, V8. Alright? And even those cars gave the Guru no happiness. It just took more money because it took more fuel. Alright? So I only realized at the last service of my current car when I counted the plugs they, 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 they uh, these service centers they give you all the used parts black back they throw it in your car so they can see that the service has been done and I only found three plugs so from V8 I'm going to a three cylinder I thought it was a four cylinder <laughs> from eight cylinder I reduced myself to three cylinders, all right? So that's where I am when it comes to cars at the moment, you ask me. But there was never any, it was only that euphoria. That is what is called euphoria, you ask me. When you haven't got something and to achieve that something, you get a feeling. It's called euphoria and not happiness. Because once you get it, after a few weeks, it means nothing. So, last week I explained that when your consciousness, I was doing chapter 13 of the Bhagavad Gita, and I explained that when your consciousness is expanded, it can reach any part of the world. I said your hands and legs are everywhere, your eyes are everywhere, your ears are everywhere. That is a description that the Lord is giving simply to show that when your consciousness is expanded, you can be in any part of this world. Again, I'm going to use the sun. So the sun's rays, they permeate all parts of this universe. Does it not? But is the sun all over the universe or its rays are all over the universe? But can you say the sun is all over the universe? Yes. Yes, why? Because its rays, which is an attribute of the sun, is everywhere. We can say the sun is everywhere. Similarly, the soul is one ten thousand the size of the tip of your hair, it will be in one locality, but the consciousness will be everywhere. You understand? So the soul, if expanded, the soul, when expanded, allows its consciousness to be all over. Is there a question there was? Somebody fighting? 
Don't touch it, your energies are not good. <laughs> Okay, are there any questions? Are there any questions in regard to the soul? No questions? That's one of the old devotees that we caught out. We can catch them out. All right. So even it's a good question. It's a scientific question. It is a scientific question to wash the Guru's feet. Wash the Guru's feet, what energy is contained in the Guru and which direction is the energy moving, from where and why? From the head going down. From? From the head going down. Yes. And this energy gets washed into a dish. This is this energy of the Guru is in Satagun, a vibration is through gravity flowing to the feet of the Guru. And that positive energy is being transferred from the body of the Guru into the water. And when you partake in this water in any form, what would happen to your energy? Hmm? It will get suffering. So that question was very, very good. Under what name they came to Vishnu, you know? Uh, Babaji. Babaji. I think Babaji is very, very stupid to ask a question like that. <laughs> <laughs> what you all think? This Babaji is in Tamogun. This Babaji is in? Yeah, so you get all types of Babajis. Some of them are in Satagun. Some of them are in Rajogun. And some of them are in Tamukun. So, how did I know Baba is going to ask this question? Because, see, the answer is wide open here for Babaji. The answer is for who? And where does the answer for Babaji comes from? And who speaks in the Bhagavad Gita? So let's see what Lord Krishna wants to tell Babaji. Let's see what Lord Krishna wants to tell Babaji. See, right here. Right here. I was waiting for Babaji. I knew Babaji is going to come on this live platform, this is live, right, and I'm reading, is Babaji still on? Yeah, Babaji, this is for you. Chapter 14, verse 8. Know that Tamas is born of false knowledge and deludes all embodied self. It binds, O Arjuna, with negligence, indolence, and sleep. What does indolence mean? Mm. 
Indolence means to avoid doing work. All Babaji is supposed to be having true knowledge. All Babaji is supposed to be working for humanity. And all Babaji is supposed to have no negligence. Have no negligence. Let's continue for Babaji. Why are you laughing at Babaji like that? Non-illumination. See, Babaji was in the satsang. Where Babaji was? In the satsang. Even the positive water of the feet could not affect Babaji. And I'm telling you why. The positive water of the feet could not affect Babaji because verse 13 chapter 4 verse 13 non-illumination inactivity negligence and even delusion these arise O Arjuna when Tamas prevails so Babaji has been insulated with stupidity and would sleep and would inactivity this ashram cannot attain Babaji's in this ashram you have to be awake you have to have pure knowledge you can't sleep here so this Babaji was sleeping here and this Babaji is very very upset because now Babaji is sucking the honey from outside the bottle. When you into the ashram, Guru opens the bottle, you can suck the honey from inside the ashram and get the real taste. But if you are Babaji, whether you suck from inside the bottle or outside <laughs> the bottle, you are just Babaji. And I was waiting for Babaji today. This, uh, uh, this Lord Sri Krishna is giving Babaji's character, all right? And I wish Babaji comes on every week. So, this is now Babaji's mother's womb from which Babaji was born now, right? And this is Chapter 14, verse 15b. Similarly, one who has met with dissolution when tamas prevails is born in the wombs of beings lacking intelligence. So Babaji's mother had no intelligence. And I'm not saying this, Babaji. It's what Krishna is talking to. You please come onto my platform every week. I will ask the Lord to speak to you. I tried speaking to you when you were in the uh, satsang and I failed miserably. That is why you are not here. You went outside and you became Babaji. Then I will still give you a privilege of being in my satsang by Lord Sri Krishna speaking to you, Him, Self. Jai Sri Wait